Am I back in time? Did it? Did my Wi-Fi just die? No, my computer just did something really fucking weird. I don't know what the fuck happened there. Let me just get reset up here. Test. All right. Am I back in time? What do I think to happen when I have a fucking headache? My Wi-Fi is back? No, as I said, it's my my computer crashed or something like that. I don't know what the hell happened. Did I manage to start it back up in time at the very least? Oh. Fucking stop it. Alright, well, it looks like I fucked it. Alright, whatever. Can you said I dirt enough of the bullshit that goes on in this courtroom? <sighs> I understand, I understand you mean well as a joke. I... Whatever. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. I'm sorry for what my sister said. I'm just gonna repeat because I'm not, I'm gonna re-upload this. But... Drastic times require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. I didn't know. I never knew that the S Online incident was just another name for the Joe Dark killings. Sounds like everyone's heard about these killings but me. I don't want a dark convicted so badly. That's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. What do you mean, what happened to you? It's all there in the file. Joe Dark's last victim was Prosecutor Neil Marshall. When he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. What did you have to do with those killings, Emma? On the night when Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, Joe Dark tried to kill me. What? He tried to kill you? Officer Marshall's brother, Neil, was only trying to save me. So that means you... Yes. I was a witness in the Joe Dark trial. I didn't see that one coming. It happened two years ago. It was right about this time of the year, too. There was a terrible thunderstorm that day. Unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. We were planning to eat dinner together once she finished her work. Then suddenly, this terrifying man came bursting into the office. Joe Dark. It seemed like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. I didn't know what was going on. Just then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Jake Marshall's brother. Joe Dark tried to take me hostage. Before he could, Mr. Marshall tackled him. Then, what happened? I'll never forget it. Lightning struck and the lights went out. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning flashed up flashed outside the window, lighting up the office for an instant. What I saw then burned a permanent picture in my mind. I... I can still see it now. Permanent picture? I don't remember the moment when uh, Dark stabbed Mar uh, Marshall. So you weren't able to testify about that? No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be why Lana... Why she made up the crime. Made it up? You mean provided bogus evidence? Prosecutor's office wanted that guilty verdict so badly. 
Lana forged the evidence. Mr. Edgeworth used it. Edgeworth? Yes. But I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. He couldn't have known he was being given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. The rumors about Mr. Edgeworth, I mean. It's all my fault. If I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. So that's true, even though I made it out of no one Edgeworth was really involved in falsifying evidence. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She became cold, like she is today. She may not, must not have been able to face up to what she did, especially not to Emma. What did you see in the instant that crime occurred? Nice, Phoenix. Prying at the PTSD, dude. Thank you for that, Joey. Dark knocked down uh, Mr. Marshall and raised his knife. Oh, I'm fucking right clicking, dude. I don't remember what happened after that. Apparently, I passed out. When I came to, Lana was cradling me in her arms. Poor Emma. You've been through so much. I couldn't bring myself to testify that instant. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. Two years ago. You must have been 14. That's understandable. Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I became a scientific investigator. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies. And find the evidence to make an airtight case. That way, Lana would never have to forge any. I see. That's actually quite noble. I think I'm finally to understand what makes Emma tick. But there's still something that bothers me about that truck that crime. There's something that's puzzling me, Emma. What is it? You said you were in Lana's office at the time, right? That's right. Why then would a serial killer come running in there? Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor? Oh, there's no mystery there. Joe Dark had been taken in for questioning that day. Taken in for questioning? You mean by the police? Of course. This happened at the police department. He tried to run away halfway through the interview and fled into my sister's office. But then why did you run all the way to your sister's office? Because the detective offices and questioning room are right across from the elevator. Across from the elevator? Alana was the chief of prosecutor, wasn't she? No, silly, didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lena was a detective. Oh. She was the best in the entire force. What? That's news to me. After the Joe Dart case, she was transferred to the prosecutor's office and made chief prosecutor. I used to be a detective. Better never have another talk with her. Lana. Mr. Wright, it seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence. I didn't think you were the type. Criminals don't mind playing foul, why should we? But Lana, if you're wrong, an innocent person might be found guilty. Believe me, I understand the risks. Lana, Emma told me about you. Oh? About how you were a detective two years ago. And now the SL9 incident was the reason for your transfer to the prosecutor's office. That's right. Could you fill me in on the details? Especially about the un that unusual change of jobs. I suppose you have a right to know, Mr. Wright. It 
that's true. I was a member of the police force two years ago. She was amazing. They still talk about all the cases she and Chief Gant cracked together. Chief Gant? He was a deputy chief of police back then, but he still worked at crime scenes. Damon Gant. He was everything I aspired to be. They were the best team ever. They solved crimes before the reports could even be filed. It really idolizes her big sister. But now you're chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned on becoming a prosecutor. The reason I became a detective was to gain experience investigating crime scenes so you could use that experience in court, right? Gant's help on the SL9 case was crucial to its resolution. After that, he became chief of police and arranged my transfer to the prosecutor's office. A lot of revelations were uncovered at the trial today. None of what, none of the least which was the fact that this case is largely connected to another one two years ago. Evidence from that case was stolen as well, though I expected as much. I know how obsessive uh, Officer Marshall can be. That trial, it really wasn't fair, was it? I believed in you, Lana. I believe that no matter what happened, you'd always stick to the truth. It couldn't be helped, Emma. At that trial two years ago, I sold my soul. Well, all drama aside, the fact of the matter is, by 15, there was no murder at the police department. Tell me it's not true, Lana. What the witness, Miss Starr, said. What about you stabbing Mr. Goodman with a knife? Lana, I don't understand. Why won't you tell us? Emma, this doesn't involve just me. Huh? I don't think I've ever seen Lana look so phased before. Two years ago, I was second in command of the detectives investigating Dark. Second in command, that means the investigation lead was Damon Gant, right? Yes, Deputy Chief Gant and I shared the same office and the same investigations. They even had the same office. But that team of the best detectives on the force. Detective Goodman, whose case it was, Jake Marshall, and Angel Star. It was the first time Marshall worked with his brother. He was quite gung-ho. Without a doubt, Joe Dark was a serial killer. We asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence. It was when his final murder took place. When he tried to murder Emma. Prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from Dark. You see, the first person who happened upon the scene of the crime was me. Now you tell us. Damon Gant and Neil Marshall were the ones that once questioning Dark that day. The investigation was in its final stages, and Dark must have suddenly panicked. So we waited until Gant and Marshall let down their guards, or let the guards down, and fled the room. From there, he ran straight to the office shared by Deputy Chief Gant and myself. That's where he found me. So you were the first person to run to the scene, Lana. It appears so. I was filing some papers while Gant and Marshall were questioning Dark. When I returned to my office, I saw three uh, three bodies on the floor and smelled blood. Three bodies. Prosecutor Marshall, the victim, Emma, who had passed out, and the suspect, Joe Dark. During the drug struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall struck a final blow before he died. Joe Dark had incurred a minor concussion and lay unconscious. What did you do? To be honest, I panicked. I picked up Emmy, Emmy? Emma carried her out of the room and just held her. I can't blame her. After all, her sister must have gone through. After that, I placed Dark under immediate arrest. Let me get this straight. You were all involved in the SL9 incident? That's right, quite a coincidence, hmm? I don't buy it. What are you saying? There's no way everyone in this uh, trial was inv also involved in that incident. Just by chance. 
That case was solved two years ago. Well, this person went to extremes because they didn't believe it was truly solved. Officer Marshall. Yes, his actions came as a surprise to me as well. Ever since his brother died, he changed completely. I guess he wasn't convinced with the ruling against Joe Dark. Life doesn't end with the closing of a case. Everyone has to live the rest of their lives with their memories. That case just might not be over yet. Emma was assaulted by Dark at the police department, right? Yes, in the office that Damon Gantz and I shared. The office that Mr. Gantz now occupies by himself, the Chief's office. We should have a look at the Chief's office, the site of the final SL9 murder. Thank you. I don't see Detective Gumshoe anywhere. They even seem kind of quiet around here today. You're right, the Chief of Detectives seems the same, though. Why don't we go look for some other people to talk to? Right, we can come back here later. Stream Court decided to ping again? Kind of figured. Howdy, Bambina. Oh, Mr. Marshall. I never thought things would turn this out way when I woke up this morning. Okay, Sierra, Sierra. You never know where life will lead you. Hey, Bambina. I should have known my luck will run out when old Billy dried up this morning. Billy? Must be his pet cactus. Say, where are you headed? Just over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a voluntary appearance. But we all know I won't be coming back. Sorry, but you can't go into the evidence room today, partner. But Mr. Marshall, why did you do it? Why did prospectors head west? If ever there was a case I needed to know the truth about, it was the one. Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall, would you mind telling us exactly what happened? <laughs> Looks like I won't be getting a steak lunch today. Something was fishy about that trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me either. All the detectives thought so. What do you mean fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, the murder weapon. The murder weapon? You mean that switchblade knife with the broken tip? That was Joe Dark's all right. But in the initial autopsy report, a question was raised. A question? The blade and knife was not a perfect match with the wound the victim sustained. What does that mean? It means there is a good chance that knife was not the murder weapon. However, in the report that was finally submitted, that possibility had been erased. Could the facts have been concealed with forged evidence? The case left behind scars in all of us. The scars that the SL9 left behind. Why is my eyes so itchy? Fuck. I got the looks, but he got the brains. He was one of the best prosecutors around. I had just made detective when it went down. It was our first case together. How old was he, your brother? He was 27 at the time. He was awarded the highest honor that very day. The highest honor? You mean the... The king of prosecutors. I knew it. What are you looking at me like that for? It's an honor for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have been really close with his brother. The day the SL9 incident took place, that wasn't the same day as... That's right. It was the day of the evidence transfer. Interesting. It was drizzling that morning and by nightfall there was thunder. I can't believe two years have gone by already. I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Apparently tried to, someone tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered, and the evidence locker was empty. There was something going on behind the cases, behind the scenes in the case. We all knew that later. Every, every detective involved in that investigation, save one, was taken care of. 
The star was fired, and I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. What about, that? What about, what about Detective Goodman? If they did something to him too, the commissioners would get suspicious. Though they were careful enough not to be too obvious. They? Who are you talking about? Don't get upset at Bambino. I mean Damon Gant and Lana Sky. The investigation lead, Damon Gant, and his second in command, Lana Sky. There was another person on the force who had heard of that duo. That case was the biggest step in both of their careers. After that case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yeah, Damon Gant, the new chief of police, arranged for that to happen. She'd never been the same since she left. Everyone knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Sky was totally different when she was a detective. Now that he mentions it, Emma said something like that too. Tell me, what happened to my sister? Sorry, Bambina, but her secret is too well guarded. I never found out. Not a secret, it all started two years ago. So there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy it, partner? It was certainly enlightening. There's one thing for sure I found out in court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. He was the one who used his falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. But someone else was the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. That someone is Damon Gant. Don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I won't even be a patrolman after today. Too bad I won't be around to work with you. When you become a real scientific investigator. Adios, Bambina. Wow. This place is always pretty empty, but today it's deserted. That means my, the bus must means everyone's busy solving crimes. Well, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the conference room. Ah, thanks. Oh, well, he actually talked to us. The chief prosecutor saying what she did and the decision about what to do about Mr. Edgeworth. Not to mention our statement to the media t and tomorrow's trial. There's more chaos going than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think festive is usually word for those. I'm sorry, we'd like to have a look around Chief Gant's office. Just use a connecting hallway to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Really? You mean it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we're not police officers or anything. Yeah, you're right, you can't go in there. It's off limits. <sighs> Emma. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to the Chief's office. Oh, crap. Whoa, where am I? The cheese of a silly? At least that's what sit on the door. Check out that pipe organ. That's real, isn't it? Yeah, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. They used to call me Little Miss Bach. I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me notes. I never could remember where C was. Hmm? Oh, it's you two. Chief Gant. He put that I was that paper he was reading into his desk. So Raido, have you been swimming lately? Uh no I I've been kinda of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I've been had have had my hands full too with Mr. Marshall's misconduct and Lana's provocative statement. Provocative statements? Oh, you mean about the forged evidence. Two years have passed since that, evidence, since that incident. My, how time flies. See that big picture on the wall over there? Okay, I know, first of all, I noticed two things. One, there's no blade. And two, the, the boss in the back. It's a picture of Lana, Neil, and I. So this is Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. 
We took it. We took it to commemorate our work together. Something's not right with that picture. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it, though. Anyway, I like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm gonna lock up here, so let's go out together. Oh, but this office. It was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long been since been over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. All the same, we like we still like to have a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. Now hurry up and get out. I have a meeting to attend. Looks like we aren't welcome. Seems that case isn't over with yet, after all. What do you mean? Chief Gant denied a request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean like a clue? There's gotta be a way we can get outside the chief's office. Can we go inside again? Hey, pal. Hey, it's Gumshoe. Yay! Detective Gumshoe, aren't you supposed to be in a meeting? I'm, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. From sitting so long? Actually. From serving everyone coffee. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe's still out of the loop. See, have, you ever, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Excuse me. Edgeworth? No, why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like uh, the battle is between you two in court. It sounds serious. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down to. I falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. But where would Edwards be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Lana Sky is the guilty party is here, isn't she? Regardless, the prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present in court. Not only that, but as you know, there's been a lot of rumors going about Mr. about Mr. Edgeworth. His amazing talents as a prosecutor kept him safe for those who don't like him. But now, with this, yeah, there are really so many people who hate him. In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth was, uh, has, not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe that I know of for making enemies. Hey, dick, keep up the good work. Oh. Oh, no. Yes, sir. Let's go for lunch again sometime. I treat. Yes, sir. You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, okay, dick? Yes, sir. Seems you don't have any problems with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned for Mr. for Edgeworth. Why is Dick even short for Richard? I want to say it's a medieval thing, but I can't remember. Well, did you find out anything? The only evidence Dirk left behind was his, was during his final attack. His final attack? I mean, when he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. Me. It seems Detective Gumshoe never realized Emma was the girl. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what was it? Oh, um, let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? His power of recollection never fails to impress. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. That might jog his memory. Joe Dirk was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. A businessman? What made him take the serial killer? One day on his, ro wor uh, on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car his car. So it was an accident? 
An accident, yes. But it transformed him into an animal. An animal. Fuck my eye. Why is it so itchy? He killed a man that witnessed the accidents. Then he killed a, lot, a lady who saw the second crime. The kid walked by then just then, so he killed him too. Then when he was burying the body, a jogger came up in the scene and he was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. Jeez. I'm gonna bet that hitting someone with his car was intentional too. I... I don't think so. Uh, before, like, a, a psychotic burst. Or, I guess, a, a break in psychosis or whatever, what have you. Uh, it could just be, like, your normal accident. Like, oh, accidentally hit somebody with your car. And suddenly you get, like, this rush of adrenaline. You, you, you have this psychotic break. And then that's what happens. I wouldn't pass some people. Put it past some people. That's how it happens sometimes. At least left for no witnesses. I guess. Yeah. Seems like he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. It was a single shred of evidence. So he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. The crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily Dark was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness, aka Emma. Because I was going to show him the weapon. I'm about this. Hey, is that? There's a tag attached to it. The label SL9 incident on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly uh, appeared from the locker. And it was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. That's it. Now I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again. This knife. It was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at. Plus it had his fingerprints on it, too. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. If you take a good look at the knife. You'll see it's broken. Dumbass. You'd have to take a good look to notice that. Our Switch play is even legal to own in Japan, where I'm assuming this takes... Uh, this is not Japan. It's, like, Big Hero 6 is equivalent to San Francisco, I guess. Where it's just an amalgamation of different cultures. Yeah, well, anyway. Take a guess where this broken off tip of the knife was found. That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it. Inside his own body. Oof. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet. Down to the last fiber. That's pretty conclusive. Seven in the back died from a punctured heart and lung. A knife tip was in the wound. Oh, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chief Gant. It's not money, but it does concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? So when Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The Chief's out now and his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around if that's okay. Well, any detective ID, ID card can unlock the door. What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. That one won't work either. The, deleted, the data was deleted the day he died. Oh. So in other words, Gumshoe is our only chance of getting into that office. 
I assume this game takes place in uh, company on art style. I wouldn't even say art style. It was it was made in Japan, but I don't think art style necessarily defines where. Yu-Gi-Oh! It was made in Japan, but it's it, it technically takes place a lot in Egypt, doesn't it? Or was what well, I'm thinking JoJo? Whatever. Fire him anyways. Yeah. I, no, I like I like Gumshoe. I don't want I don't want to keep him fired. Also, Sai, how's it going? I wonder if there's something we can show him that would make him change his mind. Going good, got some hair ties recently, so I can keep it out of my eyes. Hell yeah. Can I get meat? No one's here today. Not even Miss Star. Everyone's probably busy looking into what exactly went down in the evidence room. That must be where the detectives are. But we proved in court today that, that on the day of the crime, no one was murdered in the evidence room at 5.15. Yeah, I finally thought we were making some headway in our case. But it looks like we just ended, ended up making Lana look more even guilty. Hang in there, Lana. I've got to find all the answers by tomorrow. There's nothing different, I think. I wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. There he is. Looks like he's writing something. What are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Tough day in court, huh? Hmm. I've had to live the past two years with rumors flying around. What's another allegation to add to me? Cheer up, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm rooting for you. That's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. So what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. I wonder what I was writing before. Come on, Mr. Wright. Let's take a look. Are you crazy? Edgeworth is sitting right there. Just distract just him. I'll check it out. Uh, hey, Edgeworth. Is that Detective Gumshoe out the window there? Oh no, he's falling to the ground. Hold on. First, let me see what this girl's doing crawling around my feet. He didn't even look. What? Letter of... If you're having trouble reading, I'll read it for you. It says, Letter of Resignation. Oh, shit. And Edgeworth didn't hear Emma tell you to distract him? That's probably why he didn't look. Resignation? Edgeworth, you don't mean... I'm tired, right? I feel as if something inside me has died. But Mr. Edgeworth, none of it is your fault. I know the path I've walked. You don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been a just one. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. Oh, I think he's serious. Mr. Wright, please, you have to do something. It's letter of recognition. I wonder if I can use it for anything. There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I can, I can do can, can erase that fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean that the evidence was falsified. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error. My responsibility as a prosecutor in charge. The fact that remains uh, the same no matter what excuses I might have. Mr. Edgeworth. I take pride in my work. So tell me why. Why has it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this emotion bottled up. 
Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Nah. First, last year's trial, and now this one. Seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on a trial. Tomorrow's the last day. It's too late, late to change prosecutors. Some advice from your uh, the Nintendo Wii manual. Your Wii is not thirsty, just does it does not want orange juice. Yeah, I've read that one. I'll put my that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? A list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run, run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists. That's odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecuted for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. He uses the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. That was really the only thing on my mind at the time. Say, so we just saw a picture taken around that time. That picture. Something seems strange about it. I guess I gotta present that picture. Could you tell us again what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered. You were participating in a ceremony over at that station, right? I never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this? Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. I finished up at the office in the morning, then drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Yes, just odds and ends, clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Oh yeah, Chief Gats began to ask you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes, it was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. So you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the Chief asked you to? That's right. Fuck, there's a lot of evidence. This picture was hanging on the wall in Chief Gant's office. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken uh, when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding. It's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. I remember now. Remember what? That was the official prosecutor's trophy it looked like until two years ago. There's a story behind its design. A story? Not interesting. Would you mind telling this to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award is based on. This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, and the second means shield. Have you heard the story? Me? Oh, uh, sure. Everyone knows that. Why don't you tell it, uh, though, for Emma's sake? Very well. Long ago in the ki Kingdom of Chu, I really hope I said that. I'm so sorry if I botched that. There was an arms merchant. One day, he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he could claim could withstand any weapon. Hmm. Wait a minute. Those claims contradict each other. They're very perceptive. But then again, you've heard the story before, right? Both of them were frauds, yeah. Anyways, as you mentioned, the fair description of these items discredited them both. The king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless. And thus, the Chinese word for contradiction was born. And then he was eventually killed. Because no one dupes the king like that. Oh, I see. So the chip shield and broken knife symbolize... Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words. But it's in our nature to pursue natures to their conclusion. Even its results in, in something as ugly as this. Wow. Thanks, Mr. Edgeworth. 
And the king trapped in a box is only the thing. The only thing the king didn't have. Nothing. Not even air. Ah, oh, thanks. I learned something new today. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? You'll have to ask Chief Gant. Years ago, he, he had the halberd part of the award abolished. Chief Gant. Excuse me. Would I like you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Just a, a straight up quarter pound of roast beef. Okay. I guess she's out of lunches. You certainly are the curious sort, aren't you? Kind of like the first person who sucked a cow's nipple to discover... Why is this that a sentence I decided that I just fell for reading? Still, I never thought you'd go digging up that case from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day the evidence from that case was due for transferal. This can't be attributed to mere coincidence. Aren't you forgetting something? You know, that little scene I ha that I happened to witness? The instant Lana stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. Now, how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be savored when eaten. The star's hatred towards Lana. Oh, well, it's back to two years ago. Joe Dark. That's a name I'll not soon forget. We trailed him for a half a year. Oh, the pressure. Still, I don't think it was more alive than I than it was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. Poor old Jake Marshall, though. Must have been going through hell. You mean, because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made her all the more desperate. Her? Lana Sky. My sister. The best of the best were put on that SL9 case. Of course they were led by that legendary duo. Lana and Chief Gant. The legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we're so shocked over how it turned out. You mean with the forging of the evidence? Don't get me wrong. Joe Dark already deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence pr uh, pr produced in court was being manipulated. Items our team never found so would suddenly appear, while other items were kept secret. But you don't have proof anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough of what happened. After that case, all of us save Goodman uh, were relieved of our duties. Most without even so much as an explanation. The Lana Sky transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lana always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Lana Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. She was being used. Damon Gant to Lana Sky. Gant led the investigation with Lana's second in command. They were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Damien Gant's magnetism in particular was most unreal. His magnetism. And by that it made his ability to attract evidence. He produced the most incredible evidence in the cases he'd handled. Incredible evidence, you mean? Oh yes, there were rumors even back about him even back then. No one dared confront him, though. I take it she's talking about forged evidence. Back then, everyone looked up to Lana. All the detectives wanted to be like her. Imagine Dark Dark was innocent this whole time. Who knows? Really? Oh, yes. Myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated anything crooked. 
and always watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would have ever recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all the more infuriating. Miss Star. That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn so cold after that? Lana transferred to the police at uh, the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, thanks to Chief Gant's powerful influence. Chief. That's right. Having solved the SL9 case, the position of, of, as Chief was secured. There's only thing one left for him to control. And then no one could stand in his way. The prosecutor's office. What? You mean that's why the line was transferred? If he can control the chief prosecutor, he can control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But how could he control Lana? I don't know, but one thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a reason for her change. At last. Finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Star. You listen to me, Rookie. It takes more than just ingredients to cre create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chief than I've been. A better chef than I've been. I'm glad she doesn't hate me anymore. Oh, you're back. You're still here. I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Brewing coffee, copying files. I'm turning it turning into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well. If I'm mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. Oh, that DJ. I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer's still no. I'm not letting you in the chief's office, period. I'll be, uh, it'll be my neck on the line. That office is the last crime scene in the SL9 incident. I have to take a look in there. There's gotta be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. Uh, present. What's this crumpled up piece of paper? N no way, Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious. Is he ever not serious? I can't believe they pushed him this far. Major Mr. Edgeworth really feels responsible. When I first met him, I thought he was as cold as ice too. But I know different now. He trusted us detectives to provide him with sound evidence. But we just... We betrayed him. Detective. That's it. I've made up my mind. But... Here, take my ID card. We can't do that. If someone found out, they wouldn't let you, out, let you off the hook with another lost item report. Look at me. It's no secret that I'm already out of the loop. After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, I may already be as good as terminated. What? So at least let me do this, for Mr. Edgeworth's sake. Alright, Detective, thank you. Thanks, bud. Here goes, Mr. Wright. Click. Beep. We're in. If anyone finds us now, Detective Gumshoe's a goner. 
If that happens, I'm counting on you to bail me out. <laughs> Sorry, I th I thought you were a ghost. I didn't even know you could slap a ghost. Ah, Detective Gumshoe. What are you doing sneaking up on us like that? I I wasn't sneaking. I was just worried something might go wrong. So I came too. If you're here, what's the point of point in giving us your ID card? Gumshoe's ID crushed and rendered unusable in pocket. Why why would you do that to poor Gumshoe? That's his ID. If anyone sees us, should this place have security cameras? Probably. Hey, don't do that to my card. I hardly ever get a chance to come in here. So I figured I'd have a look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now. You really do want to get fired, do don't you? Not if we're lucky. Now come on, let's see what we can find out. Got a bad feeling about this. This is the real deal, isn't it? This armor and these weapons? Sure as pal, the chief doesn't care for imitations. First the pipe organ, now this armor. Do you know how many taxpayer dollars must have gone into this room? What, you mean we're paying for this? That's it. I'm not paying one cent to my taxes. You don't have any taxes to pay. Shh, be careful of what you say. Who knows, the chief may be hiding this armor as we speak. I don't think he'd fit in there. Even if he did, he'd never be able to get back out. Cut it out, you guys don't know how scared that guy can be. <laughs> Tax evasion, let's go! Yeah. Wow, look at the size of Chief Gant's desk. Speaking of that, when we were here earlier... Oh, it's you two. Chief Gant. He put that paper he was reading in his desk. I wonder what he was reading. This looks like a list of evidence. A list of evidence? In most of the cases, the list runs twice as long, though. Hey, look at the case name. Huh? SL9 incident. Oh, it's, is it the other half? Hold on, detective. What did you just say? I said, I wonder what... No, about evidence lists. Normally they're twice as long? That's right, I guess there wasn't a lot of evidence. A half-size list of evidence. List of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. What would the other half the uh, list be doing here? I know, the chief, the chief must be hiding something about that case. It would appear so. It was ripped in half, so this part is all I got. Oh. And what was this? Looks like someone drew some kind of sketch here. What is it? Did you find something? I can't make it out. I better keep quiet about it for now. Huh? Oh. No, it's nothing. Why are your eyes moving about like that, Mr. Wright? I better not forget about this picture. Duffa doesn't look ripped in half. It's probably like along the top kind of thing. I was expecting like that list to tell me something, not like... This is a safe, isn't it? Safe. That word is ripe with intrigue. Uh, okay, if you say so. Looks like a code needs to be entered into this panel to open it. The seven digit number, I think I might just might know what it is. Oh, I think I know what it is. Do you know what it is? I have a hunch. Oh, I know. You want to try my birthday? It's... I have a better idea. Here goes nothing. Hell yeah. Bingo. 
That safe code is so bad. I know, but the only reason I know it is because of the uh, the the list. Where is it? This one. Or it's uh, the 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 four the, the sorry the seven sevens. Bingo. What number did you enter? His birthday was that, pal. Seven 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 seven. The final IT card number on that record. What? The number of the mysterious executive officer who entered that room that day. You mean seven 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 seven? That ID number? I think you're one seven shy this time. This can only mean one thing. That's Chief Gant's ID number. Say, anyone care to look inside? Is there any money in there? How much does he have stashed away? Look, it's a, a, a shard from a broken cup. This looks, this looks, somehow looks familiar. Where have I seen this before? There's something else in here too. What is this? It looks like a piece of leather cloth. This is a handprint, isn't it? Yeah, I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once. You think Chief made up the design? Ah, uh, I don't think so. Oh, well, it was just a thought. Is that it? That's, that's all it was in the safe? Apparently so, it's empty now. A piece of cloth with a handprint on it. And a broken shard from a cup. They look like pieces of evidence. You have else you can prove they have something to do with this case. I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line here. Great, now I have to prove their relevance to get them. How are these two items related to the SL9? Come on, there's gotta be something we can show the detective. Detective Gumshoe, could you have another look at the jar? I remember the three of us put that back together. Ah, those were the days. It's kind of early to be nostalgic. Was this jar a piece of evidence from that case? That's right, one of the shards had an SL9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know, that fragment we just found? You mean this one that was in the safe? Yes, that one was in that safe. Now that you mentioned, it's ringing a lot of bells. Let's see if it fits. Yeah, let me see that shard. I'll take a crack at this. Go ahead, pal. Show us what a rookie can do. Mr. Right, here's some glue. If they can piece this together again. It'll prove that Chief Gant was unknowingly hiding evidence. Here goes. There, it fits like a charm. That, of course, means... Chief Gant unwillingly and unknowingly... and knowingly hit a piece of this jar in his safe. In other words, he concealed a piece of evidence from the SL9 incident. But, hey guys, get a load of this. What is it? This piece you just attached. It's different from the others. It's... Oh, no. There's a reddish line on it. A reddish lion. That's blood. I don't get it. Why would Chief Gant hide this in his safe? Oh, fuck. I don't be able to give you information, so that's why I have to get it all in my system now. You understand, don't you? Don't be so negative, detective. We do want you to share your information, though. Oh, who am I fooling? I never had anything useful to share to begin with. I gotta stay positive. Honestly, thought that was a character? Yeah, that, that makes sense.
You can see pretty far from 15 stories up. If you were to drop that suit of armor from here. At first the chief wanted this, this, uh, to use the stained glass uh, from this window. Really? Why didn't he? They say he changed his mind because he wouldn't be able to see the view. Oh. Stained glass or not, it's a huge window. The blood smear being some form of a letter number word. Yeah, it's... Problem is, if you look at it, I, I can see now where it's going to go. It's uh, E M A. That's not. That's why I have like serious concern. The chief's sure, uh, the chief's organ sure is a sight to behold. Occasionally we hear him playing it from the criminals' affairs department. It's on the second floor, and this is the fifteenth floor of an entirely different building. <laughs> EA Sports is in the game. <laughs> Detective screws up. The chief calls him to his office, makes him to listen for to listen to the organ for hours. What's so bad at that? He's excused the soul. After that, the detective can't hear anything for days except the ringing in their ears. So it's an instrument of punishment, literally. But aren't the chief's ears affected? He never listens to anyone, anyways. That's beside the point. This was Lana's desk. It sure is tidy. Lana was always uh, has always been a meticulous cleaner. There's not even any dust on it. Looks like someone's still keeping it clean. Does ever Lana ever come back here? No. Chief Camp must still keep it clean in memory of their partnership. They were the stuff legends made, are made of. Is he keeping the memory of her or in the memory of the crime? You walk into a mansion, it's empty and dark. You see someone in the corner trying to play eerie music. I mean, at least I'd try to p pretend to be scared for their sake. These shelves are mostly empty. Lana must have cleaned them out when she transferred over to the prosecutor's office. A small picture frame on the little shelf left shelf. Hey! This one that Lana and I went to the theme park. Look at that giant window. Makes you want to crash through it and jump outside. Ah, this is the 15th floor. I know, I was just saying. Fuck, I love you, Gumbo. <laughs> gumbo? Gumshoe. Fuck! And Gumshoe, no. <laughs> Ever since Make a Detective, I've always dreamed about doing something like that. Note yourself, Detective Gumshoe has a lot of dreams. So long as he doesn't go crashing through that window. When he gets fired. Don't say that. It was taken on that day two years ago. The day uh, Joe Dark ran out of the ran out of the questioning room and ki tried to kill Emma. After receiving his award trophy, Mr. Marshall took a picture here. Then went along with Chief Gant to question Dark. I bet he never knew he'd be found dead just a few hours later. Alright, I already made the joke for me. No worries, Sai, no worries. Appreciate it nonetheless. Did Joe Dark suddenly remember that Emma saw him murder a bunch of people? No idea. Gee, you think? Wow, look at the size of Chief Gant's desk. We found this inside the drawer. A list of evidence from the SL9 incident. Mr. Edgeworth had the other half of that list. What would this list be doing here? Better look at a little more to this list. This mark looks like some kind of flower. Where it is, it's designed after the insignia on the prosecutor's badge. Prosecutor's badge? Yeah, like the one hanging from your collar. What? They have badges too? 
Is that supposed to betray the severity of the punishment system? Now that I mention it, it does kind of look all pointy, kind of painful. But Mr. Edgeworth never wears a badge. That's because he's a sharp dresser. A badge like that wouldn't go too well with his outfit. So sharp dressers don't need to wear badges? I guess everyone just kind of lets it slide. That's, yeah, that's supposed to signify severe punishment. <laughs> Alright, so I need to present why the other thing is. Actually, you know what? I think... What if we did this? Detective Gumshoe, I'd like you to have a look at this. Yeah, I know what that is. So you want to take some fingerprints? That's a great idea, Detective. Alright, go to town. Sheesh. Sheesh! What are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead, take my fingerprints. Um, it's not your fingerprints we want to take. Huh? Come on, this isn't the time for jokes. We're talking about the cloth we found in the safe. Oh, <laughs> I knew that. The one with the handprints on it, right? Sheesh, where's your sense of humor? Sheesh! Alright, I know how to do this. Hmm. I gave it my best shot. That's kind of result one might be any good for magic prints, will it? But it doesn't look like we've got a clear result from uh, this print. Okay, let's try a different one then. Come on. Hmm. Give him a shot. Okay, actually good print. How can this be? What are Emma's fingerprints doing here? Hey, you found a match. Whose fingerprints were they? Huh, oh, uh, it seems the prints are too old. They aren't clear enough to get a match. Aw, uh, that's too bad. Thought they'd be Dark's prints. Psst, hey you, over here. What's going on here? What are that kid's prints doing on inside, this, inside the chief's safe? Don't ask me. Let's just keep this MF information from from Emma for now. Here. Maybe you should hold on to this. The desk on the other side of the room. Was that your sister's? Yes. That's where I was waiting for Lana. I thought he was asking Gumbo with or Gumbo, Gumshoe, fuck. Why am I keep getting those names? I call Skiss Fix and I call I call Gumshoe Gumbo. On that day two years ago. Is anyone using it now? No, sir. This is entirely Chief Gant's office now. He practices a strict policy of preserving the crime scene. That's a strange reason to leave it here there. He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. Gumshoe Gumbo, same difference? Yeah. Yeah. Told us himself at our New Year's party. Of course, he was pretty to intoxicated at the time. I see. So ever since Lana left, no one ever touches that desk. No one except Chief Gant and the cleaning lady who's in here each morning. Still two years have passed since that incident. There can't be possibly any clues remaining. Can I ask you something? Sure. You only came here to look around, right? Because it's one of the SL9 crime scenes. I mean, that's your only reason for coming here, isn't it? Why do you ask? You don't think... Nah, you wouldn't be. No. 
No, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay, now then, let's look around a bit more. Hey, hold on. Not so fast, buddy. Huh? What is it? When Sun tells you don't worry about it, it's supposed to start bothering you, pal. You just don't let it go at that. I'm sorry. This guy's starting to get on my nerves. Okay, so what's bothering you? You two don't think Chief Gant might be a sp suspect, do you? What? He's right, Mr. Wright. What do we think of him? Chief Gant. So it's finally come to this. What do I think of him? Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings. Yet. Yeah. Just like Gumbo. <laughs> there you go, ignoring me again. Well, was I any help? Of course. Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. That's not very kind, is it? In other words, if it, was f if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that right, you and the code? Eek! Ch Chief Gant. We didn't think he'd be back so soon. Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to look out a window and saw a stray dog run, into a run right into a pole. Okay, then. Just then I thought of a certain detective. You mean me, sir? Now then. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. Yes, sir. Sorry. Oh, you in the coat? Me, sir? Drop off your ID on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. But, sir. Now get out. Yes, sir. We'll be on our way to then. Wait. You, the one with the spiky hair. Don't go yet. N me, sir. I like a word with you. But, sir, I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. Even the spiky hair, you're free to go. Mr. Wright. Uh oh. Look, pal, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. The chief office is off limits. But no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care more if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it. And I'd seen the evidence Chief Gant was hiding in his office. I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. But why she kept you really silent about it this, all this time? Anyway, you listening to me? I'm going to try to smooth things over with Chief again. Later, pal. gonna kill it. Yeah, let's hope not. I really don't want that blood on my hands. After that, I heard from Emma. Oh, never mind. Okay, she's alive, guys. She's alive. After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police wanted to ask her some questions. So she'll be busy for the rest of the day. I see. So the chief asked Emma to come in for questioning. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I've committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But I've already told you all I can. What you told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. Really? I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. The star witness is dead. Uh, boy. You know, I think I finally figured it out. I know who it is that is lurking behind your words. Mia did a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. It seems Edgeworth was right. Oh! You're right. Thank you so much for the raid. How's it going, my dude? Uh, what were you were playing Sniper Elite, was it? How'd that go, my dude? Very good. Nice. Did you, I'm guessing you had a fun. How's, how's, how's all the Raiders, too? All right, how's, how's everybody coming in? I'm just a little extra tired today. Yeah, no, it's understandable. As as the seasons change, so do our energy patterns. Same with my chat. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, everybody's tired for different reasons. You just gotta, like, tough it out while you can. Get, get some much needed rest. Make sure you eat properly, drink properly. By drink properly, I mean drink water, but I, I think you know that. Anyways, any highlights from the stream? What's food? It's something you ingest Scion. Also, I was looking at Scion. No real highlights? Just shot people, teabagged them. <laughs> but I, on, in all honesty, I, I really urge you guys to do some self-care. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh, at least you've had fun. I don't want people... I don't want food as low as that some people can make with ovens and stove. Yes. Or if you're if you're if, if you're if you're good enough, slap slap the chicken hard enough. <laughs> I can't use mine. Why can't you use yours? Something happened to it. Do you have one? <laughs> Roaches. Uh, that. Fucking sucks. I'm sorry, man. What what you do is you go and invest in a tiny grill. Use use that as like a, a stove top. But I'm, I'm sorry that you have to deal with roaches. Also, you're right. You got any plans for the rest of the day? No real plans, just killing and chilling. I might have to go out for a bit. Uh, I hope for fun things, or at least easy, easy responsible things. Yeah. We spent a lot of money on repellents and killer and takeout. Uh, I wish there was a real way to kill them, you know? I wish roaches didn't have to be so damn resilient. Have an affo. It's a birthday party that I'm being dragged along on. If, if you're uncomfortable with a birthday party, just say no. Or you could just go in and say unhappy birthday, flip everybody off, and then just walk backwards down the stairs. <laughs> I'm going to my mom's tomorrow so I can actually be a human for a bit again. Well, at least you can, like, get, get like, decent cooked food. Get some vegetables in, yeah? Like, actual good vegetables. I wish it was that easy. It is. It is that easy. If, unless it's family, in which case it's probably not a good idea. <laughs> Obligation birthday party, understandable. It seems <laughs> we should. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm definitely down for hanging out. Uri. Just DM, DM me on Discord some of the games you enjoy, and we'll figure out something. Get maybe get a collab going, or just enjoy each other's company, et cetera, et cetera. Beth Yezos doesn't he get this free money today? <laughs> Beth Yezos. <laughs> Oh, that's that's good. I love, I love that Aya. Thank you so much for the prime sub. I, I appreciate that. Happy four months. <laughs> that, 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 that 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 was that uh, made me have a good chuckle today. Kind of helped out my headache. Thank you. <laughs> How are you doing, Aya? Hopefully, I can bake some cookies for myself too. I miss my deep deep dish cookies. Never heard of a deep dish cookie before. What's it like? I should probably progress the story a bit. Seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick-headed is the term he used, I believe. Now's my chance to get her to tell me the rest of the story. You, have, you haven't heard that before? Not, not, uh, no, I, I, I know, I know, uh, Pappy Bezos and all that kind of stuff. We joke in a pipe stream all the time. I, I only partially participate in pipe streams. Just because, like, I get kind of overwhelmed, like, watching his chat and also, like, or like, sorry, watching his stream and also, uh, looking at chat, just kind of a, like a reading overload of my brain just gets all 
funky trying to like, you know. Deep dish s'more cookies. Whoa. Put a picture in done servers there, you got me. Ooh, nice. It's my job to watch his chat and write. Uh, you're a mod, right? I'm a chat viewer now for Pipe. I'm surprised you can even understand his chat, Funky. Yeah, I, it's. I, I I think if I'm if 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 I want to get bigger as a streamer, uh, if if I get bigger as a streamer, I think I'm gonna want more mods because I don't want to. Al I, fuck, that scared me. I don't know why. Uh, I don't want Ali and uh, Sticks to suffer. You know. Also, Seon, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate you, dude. Uh, welcome to the bonfire. I'm a good mod. Also, fire. There is no if. Well, I'm hoping so. The, 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 the tides of Twitch are weird, you know? Who, 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 know, who knows? You, you will be a big streamer. And I, 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 I appreciate that sentiment. However, <laughs> mindset game, bro. I know, I know. There's, there's a mindset game, but you also got to be realistic, if that makes sense. You, you don't want to be, like, lying to yourself and suddenly crash and burn into a wall. So what Techno did. They loaded up on some good people that they can have for, for a good basis when they blow up. And I'm, I'm of the opinion that, like, I, I scale my mods uh, proportionate to how active people are, you know? Once people started getting really active in my chat and actually started paying attention to me, I, I decided, you know what, let's grab more mods than just a couple friends who pop in like once a blue moon i appreciate my f friends nonetheless but yeah but at the same time fire no and i and i get that and i uh, like i said i appreciate the sentiment it is realistic if you believe it is it takes active steps to make it reality of course and as as i am i've, I've been putting a lot more effort into my streams uh a lot of the uh communication a lot of the the, the graphics that i've been using I believe you blow up. I appreciate that, guys. Hopefully, I'll be able to. Hopefully, one day. I mean, that's all, that, that's all that can be used in this world is... Remember to take a break if you need every now and then? Exactly, that's why I take a day off every so often. And that's why on my stream schedule, in my offline, on, on offline screen, the words subject to change are there. Because at any random moment, I could just decide, you know what? I want to take a day off for my mental health, for, for family matters, for just if I if I forgot to go to the store, I could just say, hey, I, need, I no stream, I forgot to grab chips or something. I don't know. Anyways, I I, I appreciate. And then regardless, uh, <laughs> stream over no chips. <laughs> regardless, I. I appreciate people's uh, like support throughout the endeavor, regardless if I've become big or not. I know that I know the tides will forever change. Nin Ninja didn't blow up in a single day, nor will I. I I'll put in the effort, mind you. I'll I'll try to acquire sponsorships and shit like that. I'm not saying I'm doing this for the money. Hell, I, I've I've already partially I've I actually have completed my goal. My goal is still going. And that's to create a community that can actively talk about mental health. That's my that's my one goal of the stream. If I if I, if I and I'm not saying I will. If I die tomorrow, my goal will be complete. Still, people will people that I have talked talked to, everyone in this chat will just I guess just gotta play Fortnite. But I ain't playing Fortnite. Everyone in this everyone in this chat, everyone in this community knows that they can talk about mental health here. And once they become comfortable talking about mental health, they will go to their friends and say, hey, you can talk about mental health with me. And just remove that fucking stigma, you know? That's, that's my one goal. I've completed that goal. There have been people who have talked about mental health things here. Actively in chat. Put it out, straight out into the public. And I, it's like, I'm more than happy for them, of course. And like, once they can do that, they can help other people do that. Not necessarily here, but just in general. That's my rant. Thank you for the boss jerk and I trade. Oh fuck. I said this many a times. And it's, it's again, it's one of the reasons why like my my username is the way it is. My username used to be a suicide note. Well, I say that in a very, very 
uh, paraphrasing way, but it's what I do. It's I, I left it so that people know that I talk about my mental health. Other people can talk about their mental health here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm sorry for people who just came in and just listened to me rant. I'm drinking a chocolate shake. Hell yeah. Anyways. I have to admit I was a little more than perplexed at first. Your sister, you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. That's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. What an intriguing notion. A certain individual, you say. You think I'm protecting this person. Protecting? No, I think afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, who may I ask this, uh, is this person you're speaking of? The one I am supposedly frightened of. What is this person's name? You're afraid of Meekins. Well, Miss Sky. Mr. Wright, you are addressing the Chief Prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about what you think you know? We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. Assuming he's respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically, hiding and forging or evidence. Of course, these are serious offenses. Why is it, though, that the Chief Gantz, was, the Gantz name was never mentioned? Chief Gantz? Edward didn't know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly tampered with the evidence was... me. I had access because I was second command of that investigation. Yes, you, but also one other. Damon Gantz. If you intend to accuse Chief Gantz, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gantz falsified evidence in that case. I found this in a safe in the chief's office. This jar piece and this piece of cloth. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. I... The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gant himself. Now tell me, why are you taking all the blame for him? Touche, Mr. Wright. Alright, we're about to get into some juicy shit here. Brace yourselves. It is easy surmised. I cannot disobey the chief's orders. Even if it means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Come now, Mr. Wright. Can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate. And the murder of Detective Goodman. Or perhaps I should say, follow orders. Yes, that's more accurate than cooperate. Although I can't tell you the details. I can say that I was given an order that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it in the side, inside the trunk of Miles Edgeworth's car. Just as I suspected. Despite of when everyone believes. You're not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Correct. I was trying to take the body out of Edgeworth's car. The trunk's lock was broken, and I discovered that murder weapon while inspecting the body. The murder weapon? You mean Edgeworth's knife? No. When I found the body, this knife, this was the knife that was stuck in it. From the SL9 incident, the serial killer Joe Dark's knife. I couldn't just leave that knife in him. So I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. That would be Edgeworth's knife. That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. And that's for the reason for the bandage on your hand. Right hand. Yes, it seems that I got blood on the victim's shoes as well. And then... She saw me just as I plunged the knife in. 
Miss Star, huh? Why did you need to hide Dark Snipe so badly? Took a lot of work to finally close the dark, uh, the dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want it to be opened again. Yeah, the initial stab bloom didn't kill him. The loss of blood or asphyxiation from being alive. Uh, no, asphyxiation wouldn't have. Uh, according to the autopsy record. My intent was to prevent by any means, by whatever means possible. So, you did, you hit Dark's knife. The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence of the Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So you wrap the knife in your scarf and hit it. In Edgeworth's exhaust pipe. Right. Then I called my sister to tell her what happened and to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. You asked Emma. I will drown everyone's in this chat. Love you too, General. Also, how's it going, General? If, if I haven't asked already. You asked Emma. Hey, Abby, how's it going? Uh, gaming? Gaming. Good over you. I'm alright. I have my headaches finally fucking wearing off, so that's good. You asked Emma. I didn't want anyone in the force to know about this. That would explain why Emma is so, con is so confident. About Lana's innocence. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad, f a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling. The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. To Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for the SL9 incident had been murdered. Oh, Abby, are you streaming today? I wanted that fact to be kept hidden, and I needed help. Oh. No, you're not streaming today? Why not? How's it going? How's your game? Welcome, welcome all. Mines raid. <laughs> oh, uh, just swap. Thank you so much for becoming a bonfire. Appreciate it. We finished. It takes two. Hell yeah. Was it a good ending? Yeah, I'm waiting on my model. To be honest, I thought it was. I thought it was finished. I thought that's why you did it. I'm only streaming if it's our Minecraft day. Okay. Art was done? No. Oh. Rigging is almost done. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Mine kissed me in the end. Oh. Oh, s saucy. <laughs> Just homies kissing homies. <laughs> Why so up? Why would you get final? This is juicy gossip. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh boy. But I'm glad, Abby, I'm glad your rigging is almost done. Kissed is considered NSFW to Twitch, apparently. I mean, if you don't kiss your boss. <laughs> He's the only person I could trust. Or at least I thought I could trust him at the time. However, it seems that after I spoke to them, he went off on an escapade of his own. Oh, you mean... Not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Detective Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He had already stolen the ID card. But it seems he still hadn't made up his mind to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he had must have disappeared. So your phone call caused the evidence caused the incident in the evidence room. I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana, 
You've earned my respect, Mr. Wright, both a defense attorney and as an investigator. Now, please, don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Tomorrow's trial. There's only one way to drive off Lana's demons. I've got to get to the bottom of everything. Detective Goodman's real murder. How's it only about 7 p.m.? It's actually 8 here. I went down in the chief's office two years ago. Tubba continued. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. Well. Uh, oh, fuck. I forgot the thing. Da, 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 da. There we go. Oh, there's two parts to the trial. Uh. You know what? I'm going to save it for Sunday. Just so that my, my headache doesn't go too nuts. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry for the people who just joined in on that raid, but I, I, I don't want to, like, push it and just go, like, super, super late, you know? Because I know if I do this, it's probably going to be another two to three hours. So I'll, 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 I'll work on it, uh, I'll, 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 I'll probably finish this up Saturday, uh, no, Sunday. And then, uh... I just crunched on a pizza crust that sounded like an apple. Ew. The stale as hell sounding. Um. Yeah, I think Sunday is the finale for for this. Uh, so let's figure out somebody to raid. Who is on? It's only like an hour old. It's still concerning. Oh, thank you for the hydrate. Does anybody know of any smaller streamers going on right now? Let's let's give them some sauce. Thank you. Let's see, is there any good VTubers on right now? Let's 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 give some love to someone small. <laughs> Vinny? Is there any streaming right now? All right, let's let's see what he's playing. Oh, he's doing marbles on stream right now. Um, hmm. We'll see. Let me let me let me just do a quick perusal of someone's a Minecraft VTuber. No, I mean whatever boats your flow, but Genshin Impact Starbound. That's an interesting one. Person's a potato. YouTubers are fucking weird. <laughs> ah, you know what? Fuck it. Let's raid Vinny. Anyways, I hope everybody enjoyed themselves today. Let me let me let me drop some sauce here. If you're new here, have a Discord. 
we're a very welcoming community, very mental health centric. We'll take care of you, hopefully. Uh, and if you and if I gotta post some vods to it soon, but I have a vods channel. I post most of my vods to YouTube, so you guys can watch it in all its glory. Uh, of uh, seven twenty p, I think it is. <laughs> Oops, excuse me. Um, the raid message will be. Where is he playing? He's playing marbles. There. There you go. I, too, like playing with balls. If you don't have that emote, just use whatever you got. That's like a funny face emote. Oh, and thank you for the hydrate one more time. General, you're going to kill me one of these days. Copy, paste. Remember to respect Vinny. And I uh, hope everybody has a good rest of your night. Take care.